so you know the whole term breakdancer b-boy like yeah. b-boys don't like being called breakdancers we've always seen it as a slur like oh you're a breakdancer like oh you're like you're not real like you're not really about mm-hmm. it right or you you're not even about really about breaking you're just about like i don't know the tricks and stuff right for me being a b-boy today being a b-boy or being a breaker break dancer is like the break dancer just does the activity they just do the stuff but they don't know any of the connection to any to or the reason of why so they do surface, what they do. Yeah, surface. it's very surface level, right? So you can be amazing surface level mm. and know nothing about breaking and know nothing about hip hop. That's problematic. Well, for me, it's just you're just a gym goer. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, hiya. Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct central London, as central as you need to be, choose to be. Trust me, baby. It's too scary anywhere else. Big shout out to all the sharers and carers. Subscribe. Yeah? Don't melt over the pressure. Just hit the button. Give it a follow. Sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And if you want more of the street culture action, then definitely go to Television app. Free download iPhone, Android for the sport and art. Whether it be mini docs, big docs, everything on the street, DJ mixes and podcasts. Yeah, we're here. Get yourselves ready for the upcoming Hoddle Wars. It's time to graph punks up and get up with some NFT gaming. Also, big shout out to Chief Rocker Gear from streets to stage. Chief Rocker is the streetwear of champions. Uh... We have a guest inside the place, running it on the floor. Literally running it on the floor, without question. Part of the Primal Instincts crew uh, in the UK here. Um, cementing his uh, historical position in the UK on the lead-up for 2024 Olympics. It's spin inside the place. How are you, my brother? Yes, bro. Nice to meet you. Nice to be here. Thank you, bro. Yeah. How are you? Good. Yeah? Good. Busy. You're, ref- you're from around this area, aren't you? We're not, it's an undisclosed location, you understand, so we're not going to get too deep into the, the, the postcode, but yeah, you're from the, you're from the manor. <laughs> Originally, you? yeah. Yeah? Yeah, back when I was a kiddie, four, five, four years old, four, four years five old. years old, yeah. Landed, landed straight in, from London, in straight into Kensal Rise? Uh, I believe so, yeah. All of my family were around this area. Yeah? When we first moved here, yeah. yeah, yeah. What's, what's uh, family origin? Colombia. Colombia. Oh, yo, there's a big... South American scene around here, isn't there? Big Portuguese scene. Now, I don't know. That was, well, donkeys ago. Mm. I, I only remember literally the street outside the station and the house. But, yeah, nice memories. Oh, you literally here. only remember certain CPU yeah. moments? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I was only here for, I don't know, how long when I was a kid before we moved away again. <laughs> See, London London historically in the West has significant hip-hop roots. You kind of descended down on here mm. back in the 80s, didn't it? You know what I mean? And people like Scam and them, they all, they all orbit around these parts. Yeah, the whole of founda- Foundations, isn't it? Yeah, very foundations much so. Crew, yeah. yeah, very much so. Where, where did it begin for you in the hip-hop journey? For me, it was an after-school club. Break-in was an after-school club for me. <laughs> um, pretty pretty bad school. So they, they, they were struggling with, like, the boys after school, so they yeah. put money into, like, uh, after-school activity, arts, music, um, drama dance mm-hmm. and they brought down these guys to to do some breaking after school every day no every wednesday every week every wednesday anyone notable uh, as far uh, as yeah teachers? a guy called uh, bones mm-hmm. bones and scorps nice uh, from notorious crew That's and later it. on we had the uh, stretch come down as well um debo was also part of notorious nice. crew but i i linked up with him later when i joined la familia the La Familia crew from St. Mary's. Um, La Familia, that there. there's a name out there for a while. Yeah, that was my, that was my original crew. Wow. And um, Bones and Bones and Scorts were my first first teachers. And then they took me to their wow. training so, training session in St. Mary's Youth Club in, in Angel. Met the rest of the La Familia boys and we just connected and, yeah, here we are. That's crazy. It's almost like, because these you know, these people you mentioned here, they certainly within my radar of coming out through the culture and bones, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. And also the, the fact that they narrowed it down and took you up a rank yeah. to Angel. What was your thoughts when that happened? I mean, this must have been so intuitive to you as a kid. I was scared. Really? I don't, because it was like, uh, in my school, that's my comfort zone. They were coming to my studio with a bunch of people I knew and, and it was like, okay, I'm in my comfort zone. Now I'm going to a, an open training session with mm. other actual breakers. 
people who actually break, not like a class where they're like, okay, five, six, seven, eight. It's just a hall. They put some music on and everyone's doing their thing. I'm like, what, 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 what so I how old did you mean at this time? I was 14. 14. Wow, impressionable. Yeah. And man, I bet a lot of your friends around that time were definitely not on it like that. Nah, nah. They, they, well, I was still doing football at the time. Mm. So when I was 14, I wasn't serious into it yet. Mm. I was just doing that once a week mm. and I enjoyed it. I'd always like breaking or, or pretending to know what I was doing when I was a kid and at parties I'd bust out a six step or whatever I thought was a six step. So I always really? wanted to break. Where did that come from? Just TV. Really? Yeah, just TV. I remember in, in, in Colombia in, uh, in, all the, in all the parties when I was a kid with my cousins, I'd just break out, start breaking. Really? Yeah. Dude, do you know that's because that's not normal. I mean, for the age range in which you're, you, you're in, like, was hip hop... Was, was breaking the order of the day was it was that was that looked upon as like cool i think i think yeah but it wasn't it wasn't accessible it wasn't yeah, like easy to find mm. like the, the most i'd seen breaking was either on tv or music videos or leicester square mm. Mm. like a, a random street show and it's amazing when you see something like that so in your face it's a bit like graph or any of the, of the culture you're like yo what the fuck was that yeah, exactly. I saw people spinning on a piece of cloth on the hand. I was like, yeah. well, <laughs> I want to yeah, do that. I sign do me that. up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so when they had break in at after school club, I was I was first in. Really? Yeah, I was in. The reason they took me to the after to the uh, to the youth centre was because I'd always stay. I'd always stay for like an hour, another hour or so, just mm. practicing, just training, just because I had the space. And they, you know, my dance teacher wouldn't kick me out and they would stay as well. Mm. So everyone was just hanging out, but I was just training the whole time and they were like oh you know what you should come to the youth center because you they saw that i was actually trying to get better and train i wouldn't just you know class done and leave mm. i'd stay and stay until they kicked me out basically so always been the mindset for yourself i mean you're a very active person been into football yeah uh entertaining yourself i guess in many respects being creatively minded but there's also that extra edge that you need to be competitive yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you want to go the distance. Has that always been in your head, at your mind frame? Yeah, I think it started with just being a perfectionist as a kid. Really? I was a perfectionist as a kid, which was you know has its downsides because you're always comparing your your you know your work to another kid's, and you're like, oh my work shit. <laughs> but mm -hmm. it's not that your work shit. You just keep comparing yourself with other people. So I had to work on that as a kid. But I guess that's maybe where the competitive thing started. I was always competitive. I always wanted to win at whatever I was doing. Mm. Um, football was hella competitive. So the discipline I learned in football kind of just applied to breaking. And also transferring from a crew point of view. Yeah. Because you've got to have a position when it comes to crew. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. Can't be the, you're, you're some of the whole part, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, speaking to Stephanie, uh, old type Steph. Yeah. Um, she definitely at the moment, uh, the competitiveness in her is bonkers right yeah. now. And it, it, it appears to me that she's in competition with herself to a greater part of yeah. like the things that she's gone through, being a mum and being over here in the UK and winning the first time. It's almost like, right, what's the next? What's the next? What's the next? It's, yeah. it's a real yeah, yeah, personal yeah. thing for her, isn't it? I think as well, because like, it's different being a mum. Mm. Um, but when I, when I found out I was going to be a dad, I like it propelled everything that I was doing. Because I didn't know how much time I was really going to have to do the things that I have been doing. Mm. And I didn't know how possible it was to do as much as I'm doing now whilst having a child. So when I found out I was going to be a dad, I was like, right, I've got this, 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 this I want to do. So you just you just, you just, just put your head down and, and get to it. Because you have like that, that sense of like, I might not be able to, so I'm going ham now. Combined with to provide as a provider as well? Yeah, well, that's another thing. Because mm. they're like, you know... Growing up in a Latin American family, you're you're doing breaking, you're putting your all into breaking. They don't see it as a real job. And for a long time it wasn't because I wasn't mm. getting paid. No, I was just training and competing and maybe doing the odd job here and there, but not really like get, mm. making money. Um, so when I, when I found out I was going to, well, my, when my family found out I was going to be a dad, they were like, oh, so what are you going to do now? As in... You have to now like get oh serious. Can right? you imagine your the the um, what's it called the intervention? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically, they were like, "Oh, so what now?" I'm like, "Well, well, now it has to work." Yeah. 
that was that was the only thing that changed for me. It just intensified everything because whatever I was taking it too easy on or being slow on, I wasn't slow on anymore. I was like, it's all in or nothing. So I'd already made my decision before mm. having my son. My mm. son just like multiplied that. Mm, mm. Does the co- yeah, it changes your it changes your attitude, doesn't it? The competition, even it, 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 there's there's no such thing as losing in that respect because you you've got your mission. You know, you, you know what your journey is. Yeah, you're fucking going for it. Um, see, when I think of South America, when I think of Colombia, I think of Brazil, I think of all those beautiful countries which have the most amazing names, by the way. You know what I mean? I absolutely fucking love it. One of the prime locations I've always wanted to do shows. Their heart and soul, their attitude, their um, passion and aggression for the arts, second to none. And the history and timeline of breaking as a, a form of dance. The mm. roots are forged so deep in South America, aren't they? Loads, yeah. Like, it's a massive part of our heritage. Mm. Like, all the way back to, to being, you know, pre-Columbine, pre-colonization, mm. everything. Like, it's this. It runs deep. How deep do you have you gone into the research? I'm, about, I'm talking to somebody that probably has done a lot of research. <laughs> so please excuse the triggery kind of. Tell me more. <laughs> um, I want to get into it. Well, the, like there's a lot of there's a lot of local dances that like even just starting with something as superficial like on the on the surface mm. as salsa, for example, because salsa is an umbrella term and there's no like like salsa is like Fania Records just put a bunch of different. Um, genres in under this umbrella term of salsa, but salsa you have like uh, you have guaracha, you have um, you have ma- you have so many so many different styles that all kind sound kind of similar, mm-hmm. and they mesh them into to salsa. But each one of those genres is a genre in itself, really? which has its own dance, right? And that's just that like you know the the commercial mm-hmm. side of it. And then the, the further you go down, and you go down to like um, tribal dances and and. And specific tribes have different rituals or different dances. That it goes hella deep. It goes oh. super deep. There's a few. There's a few dancers in in Colombia who I know have done extensive research because they they try and unify these indigenous dances with rocking. So they put it into their rocking and they call it in indigenous rockers. So. Of course. Okay. But what about so capoeira? Yeah. That's a Brazilian art right yeah so with that as as i mean and it's such a throwaway thing to associate with breaking but that was a war dance wasn't it well i thought like my understanding is that it came from from slavery uh, okay. yeah so like because they weren't allowed to do a lot of stuff right and i think like combat sports was, was one of those things they weren't allowed to do for obvious reasons yeah so they they uh, disguised it as a dance and that way they were able to do their martial art whilst um, not working out or not yeah. doing like combat, 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 combat sports. So that's why it was like, so that was, that was what I'd heard about mm. how, why it was kind of dancey, mm. you know? So when we see it, it looks like more of a performance and less of, of combat. Cause it's like, that's, that was how it was disguised. Yo, that's kind of correlates with the MC art form mm. and how in the, in the prisons they would, you know, cuss each other out just by, you know, your mom's this, or but then doing it in rap form, yeah, yeah, which goes even now to nowadays with the URL rap battles. It's interesting how that restriction that was put on dance and combat, the same restriction that was put on in jail cells with people, then this becomes the prototype of what we take on as a culture. In yeah, the we'll, 80s. we'll find a way in it. We'll, we'll, we'll always... We'll, well, that's new. <laughs> <laughs> We're already talking here that this was all held up by real, real books. And it is. There we go. Right. Um, as well. So we actually adopt what is the skills and abilities with the restriction of the jail, with the restriction of the combat and sport, and we reapply it into like, almost like an 80s format of street culture. It's fucking incredible, isn't it? I heard something like that about the QWERTY, the QWERTY keyboard. Mm. So originally it was made to slow slow us down. And really? now it's like standard for, I think it was Renegade. The Renegade told me that. I'm pretty sure he, he told me that. Renegade. Yeah, that's another interesting character. One yeah. that I feel he's extremely inviting when it comes to the knowledge of certain things within the art form as well, Yeah, isn't it? I feel like when it comes to breaking, 
it, we're at this point in time where um, information is key, being passed around, getting insight into how the culture um, was forged and um, the elements in which make it make it rock. Because when 2024 arrives for the Olympics, it's almost great to have all of our assets together and a, yeah. a great understanding of each other, isn't it? Yeah. I think um, that whole knowledge thing is, is kind of being lost, though. Yeah. Like like the the um, knowing stuff, meaning like having value. Mm. Like it would it would it had value to know stuff, mm. to know your stuff, to know where something's from and who created that and why this is that way and why we do it this way and how this started. Like knowing that stuff had had value. It still holds value mm. for for me and for most people of my generation. I know the same, but I feel like that's kind of being lost a little bit. Like knowing stuff doesn't matter anymore, and I know. Well, where does that come from, though? I think I think it's a long list of of stuff that just naturally changes as the scene evolves. But I think one of the one of the reasons for that is lack of crews, which is kind of the reason I've you know got together with AJ from mm. Mavericks and we made Primal Instincts because mm. it was like um, I feel like I feel like making a crew today is almost like rebelling. Because it's not really that's not really the time to be making crews. Everything is solo stuff. Everything is the sponsorship or that medal or whatever it is. Mm. It's all solo competition. The Olympics is a solo competition. So there's no focus on group. All the focus is on self. And like I understand the natural evolution of that. Mm. I understand that there's there's two sides of everything. There's like the commercial side and maybe the underground side where you can find the stuff you want. Mm. But I think in general we should keep a base level of like um expectation from, yeah. from 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 people that partake in, in in this culture you know expectation in their knowledge you mean yeah like and how they participate outside of the olympics yeah because for me like so you know the whole term break dancer b-boy like yeah. b-boys don't like being called break dancers we've always seen it as a slur like oh you're a break dancer it's like oh you're like you're not real like you're not really about mm. it right or you you're not even about really about breaking you're just about like i don't know the tricks and stuff, right? For me, being a b-boy today, being a b-boy or being a breaker, break dancer, is like the break dancer just does the activity. They just do the stuff, but they don't know any of the connection to any, to or the reason of why so they do surface. what they do. Yeah, surface. it's very surface level, right? So you can be amazing surface level mm. and know nothing about breaking and know nothing about hip hop. That's problematic. Well, for me, it's just, you're just a gym goer. But in your gym, they spin on their head. Me? <laughs> Damn gym goers. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not living it. You're not you're not living you're not into yeah. hip hop. It's the know? same with graph and writers. Writers are different to graffiti eyes, but hands down. There is a lifestyle to this shit. Mm -hmm. Like people don't and just going back to the history and the fault lines of that, um I always critique social media for it, but it's true, like the dons get first priority seating who get to the social platform first. Yeah. What happens to the history of everything else? What happens to the past? It it, it gets um, reappropriated, doesn't it? Yeah, and like you know, those who don't know their history are doomed to repeat it, isn't it? So like, there's things that are going to be repeated that don't need to be just because yeah. we didn't do a bit of research or just because we don't know that it's happened already. Or twist or it up a little bit, just yeah. something a little bit different. Because it's funny, like w we've seen a lot of events in the past mm. and um it always surprises me when someone does something and j just the the littlest of funk tweak adjustment takes it to that next yeah it changes it completely yeah <laughs> completely it's the best isn't yeah. it? <laughs> you know what i mean and i think i think crews have a have a have a say in that like like so la familia for example mm. it was we were very much a footwork crew we just all loved traditional styles like we just liked footwork to look a certain way the, the the aesthetics to be a certain way the way we create was a certain way even though we all look different when we break we mm. were all just mad into footwork right and the 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 style that formed within our crew was because we were all into one thing and we all had our own version of that thing so we'd all God, that's tweak, good. tweak it a little you know but yeah. then you have a crew style yeah. so when someone else sees someone from my crew they'll be like oh they look like they're from la familia it's like he is they're not like you but they are like you and it's like, now you have a crew style yeah, because yeah. you all train together all the time and you're all into the same stuff and you're building together. But because that isn't happening so much now, I feel like there's very few crews that you can say, oh, that's a crew style. That whole crew is like that. 
Now it's more like you have individual formulas. So it's my formula versus your formula for competition, but you're not representing an actual style. Like where are you like where are you from? What crew are you from? Like who's who your teachers? You know, how do you you know, like you you're not getting to know the person when Study. they're when they're dancing, yeah. you know? So sometimes people dance and I don't I don't feel nothing or I don't it doesn't transmit anything to me. It's just really impressive. Mm. Super high level impressive, but I don't feel like I've gotten you know, and that's a that's a different thing. That doesn't necessarily. That's just my take on when I see people dance. You mm-hmm. know? So if it's in the Olympic setting and I'm judging, that has nothing to do with my judging, right? I'm judging this person versus that person, so mm. I'm judging the like what's happening in the battle. But as a b boy, I'm looking at: Are you in? Like, are you are you a b boy? Are you just mm. a, are you just you just mm. break? You know. Curiously, do you think there's going to be more gym buddies? Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be hella, hella gym buddies. It'll be the same as as New Year's Eve. You know, you have the you know, New Year, New Me. I'm gonna do this, and then by February they're out. <laughs> and the Olympics will be the same. Loads of people are like, yeah, I want to be yeah. an Olympian, and they haven't won a local competition. Like the yo-yo back in the day, or yeah, karate. yeah, yeah. It'll just it'll just be in for till it gets hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then when they realize how hard it is, they about skateboarding. They'll, they'll drop out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's no disrespect. Have a go. Have, do have a go. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. Want, we want, we want champions. We want British world champions. And well, there's different levels for everything. So mm. like, not everyone wants to be like in skateboarding. Not everyone's trying to be Tony Hawk. That's some people true. just want to, just want to skate under a bridge with their mates and and you know try some stuff out. And it's like that's there's space for it all. And that's awesome as well. That's awesome. But it's like if you want to be a, a, an Olympic athlete. Mm you're going to have to abide by certain mm. disciplines and certain ways of doing stuff. If you don't want to do that, there's a whole scene for you mm. where it's not about gold medals and that and it's just about the breaking and, the, mm. you know. So there's there's space for everything. It's just the accessibility to those spaces are going to maybe be increased because of Olympics now, which mm-hmm. I think is a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. Spin, I'm in agreement with you wholeheartedly for the reasons you said and more that there should be more crews like incubated places where styles can be defined individually, expanded, a, a style expanded on, that when you do, uh, when eventually going to the Olympics, people turn around and say, yo, that's a style. It's got a home to go to. Yeah, 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 yeah. It almost becomes the the the, the funnel that brings it back to the source, which exposes everyone mm. within the collective. I've always seen breaking as as my martial art. Because I, I, I really like battling. That's what I was, that's what kept me in breaking. Like breaking looks cool. So I wanted to do it anyway. I want to do cool stuff. Mm. And then when they, when they showed me that battles or how battles that you can have a call out, I was like, oh, I like, now I love this even more. Oh, even more. Yeah, this is great. Now <laughs> yeah. I, can, I can call someone out and test yeah. myself. And, and I did that for, well, for ages before I really started like competing mm. or having enough level to compete on stage. I was just calling people out in circles at the time. And um, so for me, it became like, this is my martial art. And La Familia is like my, my dojo. Mm-hmm. So we, we fight like this. And, this is, this is, and we want to test our style against everyone else's style and mm. figure out how to, how to beat you with my style. Not just how to win for the sake of like winning. It was, I want to win like this. Mm. I want to win within this, you know, and, and adapting your style to, for that. So mm. like, like Bruce Lee in that, um, that movie, um, Game of Death, and yeah. he's got each level. And each level, he's got a different, a different style, and he's got to figure out how to beat that person with what he does. That for me is breaking. See, that's the thing as well. Like, I forget about Bruce Lee, you know, and the, his his vision of of mixed martial arts and and how influential he was to to the b boy scene, right? Big time, big time. <laughs> just the spiritual mind of it all, you know, just the the attention to detail. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think like. Even that, I think, is connected to crews, mm. like that attention to detail. Because who has the information? It's usually the, the the elders, the older generation. But if you don't have connection with them, then where are you getting it? You're getting it straight off YouTube, mm. right? And as we know, social media, they they go past a lot of the details and they just go straight to the main yeah. to the main thing. So like, so we don't have process no more. So if I wanted to learn something of someone. And that's the person to go to. I'd have to go there and ask them to teach me it. They would say, no, do this first. 
because they're giving you a process mm. and, and leading you up to that thing. They don't just give it to you straight away. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So You work your way up right. the rank. And they it. mold you and whatever it is, they, yeah. the process they're putting you is so that you can do that best, better f further down the line mm. or whatever. But now you don't have to. If I go to you and it's like, oh, you can you teach me this? And you're like, no, nah, you have to do this, this, this first. I'm like, I'll just go on YouTube. I, I can see it in slow mo and different um different teachers different languages it and doesn't win the I race just, i can just cut yeah 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 yeah. fast track yeah shortcut it yeah doesn't fucking work no not 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 for long term for right now yeah for that thing you wanted all right cool but then for everything every connecting piece is you have to like undo it it's like it's like doing a sudoku puzzle and then getting one square wrong and then figuring out you have to rub out like 15 squares to get back to where <laughs> so you were true. so true <laughs> oh man that one you know if you doing braiding or knitting you see that one thing yeah and you keep on going even yeah, though you've yeah, already yeah, fucked exactly. it you gotta go all the way back well and this is actually i think the wider debate it's how quickly are not just britain but all the world in uh athletic athletes are they going to be able to find new prospects that actually have all of that timeline mapped out of learning curves development uh, training execution like what four years from now that's four years older the current players will be there has to be youngers coming through have they learned uh, have they adopted that that mindset early enough i think some countries definitely have like like china have come out of nowhere oh my god yeah they've come out of no, no one knew about chinese <laughs> breakers or anything like that we knew like maybe a couple names from if you've been to China yourself, you've gone to a few events, is that, oh, there's that one Chinese person. Now they have Team China and they're coming out and they're wrecking shop. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. in the space of a couple, you know, a few years since this Olympics thing. So they've definitely done that. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, but the boys in Belgium from Team Schmetter, they did that a while ago. Mm -hmm. Like before this whole Olympics thing, like they were a heavy competitive crew. You saw them kind of disappear for a while. And then when they resurfaced, they all had like 20 kids each. They just went what? into. They all went into teaching, and they all had schools and stuff. That's that's like a. It was a massive influx of, of people in the in the like Belgium and, and Dutch scene that came, seemed to be from from their work teaching teaching in schools and stuff. Oh my god! And Sambo, one of those one of those uh, one of those coaches, mm -hmm. is now one of the coaches for Team Team China, along with Manir. So they're transferring to different countries to to build professionals. Yeah. Because now coaching is a thing. It was, it was never a thing before. Like you just you just had people you trained with. But you never had a, a specified coach. And even if you did, you wouldn't call him your coach. That's like my training partner. Because we coach each other all the time, but we don't have official roles, right? So sometimes you have, you may have been coached by your crew members when, when they're teaching you this because they know how to do it and you mm. don't. So they coach you through it. And you're getting coaching from many different people, but you never see it as being coached. Mm -hmm. Now you have a coach. This is your coach, and this is he's going to do your training. It's a completely different kind of dynamic to before. But does that does that rival the crew incubating thing? If you've got a ish, I mean, once you're an athlete, like you got you got to do what coach says. Just for it? that period. Yeah, and for that for what you're trying to do there, mm. and in the Olympics, it's a one on one game anyway. So how come crews haven't got coaches? They have to. I will. I feel like crews do, but you don't call it that. No. You know, and I think um, breakers are only just getting more used to the idea of calling someone a coach. You mm. know, so like I've had like uh, a lot of my crew members. I'm, I've always been the youngest in in most of the, like La Familia or Mavericks. I was always one of the younger ones mm. in La Familia. I was definitely the youngest. So I've always been mentored or coached in some way shape or form by my members mm -hmm. you know the members of my crew are, well, they're all elders and so you they're take all like a little element brothers. of everything every yeah. time you jump from crew yeah. and you build or you spar with someone yeah exactly you're, you're learning from each one Crazy. And you always learn something from each one right yeah. and i know yeah. like specific things i've learned from people and they've always been well because i've always the dynamic's been different because they've always been my elders as well so mm -hmm. maybe it's more natural for me to 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 be like for them to naturally want to be like, hey, you should do this more like that. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool, I'll take that on board. And God, that's good. Yeah, but okay. you only get that in, when you have that kind of network and the support base, which is usually your mm -hmm. crew, right? Like, or having someone like like Renegade around. 
when I was younger. If I had any questions or I wanted to know about something or see some old video, it would be his house I'd be at mm -hmm. and I'd ask questions to. So oh, he's yeah. he's been my mentor since then. Still today, we, mm -hmm. we talk shit. Like yeah. now, maybe not so much about breaking specifically, but we just talk yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah totally, totally. I get and, it. it's, and it's nice to be able to kind of do that with, with my crew now. Mm -hmm. When like some of them who are in their early 20s want to, want to say like, oh, I've been trying this, but it doesn't work for, but I don't know why. And it's like, oh, it's not working for this and that reason. Or maybe try this and that. And it's like, oh, this person who was, you know, from yesteryear did it this way. Why don't you check that one? So, oh, I didn't know about this. Mm. But it's like, it was that like, cool. Because you have, they have a crew. Mm. They have one of their elders in their crew that can pass down information. Totally. But if you don't have crews, like, how do you, how do you get that? Like, most of my music collection is from Debo. When I, when Big I, up Debo. Yeah, DJ Debo. When he, first, when he first, when we first started, like, you know, diving into this breaking mm -hmm. thing properly. He was the one that had most of the music. And be like, you heard this, do you know this? Do you know that? And I was like, I'm taking all that in. Do you know, you're not I, the first person to say this about Devo, man. Like he's he, there's there's a lot of love out there for him. Yeah, man, yeah, know? he's always he's always been about. He's still about now. Still like he's about. just he's you know, he's not dancing no more. But he was mm -hmm. he was also one of the, the, mm -hmm. the funkiest guys that I'd love like watch him get down and do top rock and yeah. whatever because he had he had the funk, you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. he's always he's always been like that musical dancey kind of kind of dude then, energy yeah. ball yeah yeah so him and other you know the rest of the crew members as well like we were into music mm. so we'd share music but these are these guys are older than me so they know they have access to other music that i didn't grow up listening to maybe mm. and they're putting me on you know but again because i had a crew just like having an older brother but five of them so important man just going back to the, because uh, of something I put to Gilu, uh, check that podcast out like all the others, you know, 500 baby, come on, get with it. Um, <laughs> dude, I made an, a, a comparable of coaching from the point of view of RX racing. So the driver will be in the car, there'll be a headset on, he can't forecast how quickly a corner's coming and to what extent he's got to turn, how far away he's from the, the, the first and second driver to overtake and take lead. So there's a guy on the top of a tower looking down, talking straight directly in his ear, go sharp here, do that there, you're too behind, yeah, da, da. And it's just constant navigation. Yeah. Um, could that ever happen with, with, with braking? It does. Does it? It does. What, an in, in training. Really? But it's not an earpiece. They're just getting shouted at. <laughs> so what's the, what's the deal? It, would, that, would that throw you off balance if you were to have an earpiece on and they were talking like that? Yeah, I reckon it would you because, you're, because we're listening to music. Yeah, true. So, you know, if you're listening to the music, then yeah. it's going to get in the way. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Sly digger those don't. <laughs> but yeah, this is something that we'll do mostly in training, not on the field. Really? So like if, we, if, if I've ever done... Um, like with Mavericks, with the the younger guys, we used to do battle days. Mm. So there'll be a day where we just do battles, and um, I do different games. And I had the specific games for whatever the goal was mm. for that session, right? And whilst the battling is happening, you're giving feedback as it's happening. So it's like, oh, oh, you've crashed with that. No, don't show it. Keep carry on going, or don't slow down, or or telling them, yo, slow down, don't rush. Mm. What? But you're telling them as it's happening because they need that. They need that feedback to know when in the moment it is that I'm talking about. Activate. Bang. Yeah. So, because it's practice. We're doing it in practice. And then, obviously, the more you do it in practice, it becomes yeah. more natural out of practice. And before you know it, like with most of Mavericks and, and Kevin, I think in the early years, whenever you're starting to mess something up or doing something that you you, you know you're messing up because you now out to correct, mm. you hear that voice in your head. It's like, oh, don't rush. It's like form. And you're like... Oh. It's his bloody voice, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. because you've done it so many times. <laughs> I've seen I've seen the live live feeds with them um, with Kev. Big up, big up, Renegade. That's my crew member, you know. Yeah, yeah. scratch perverts. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go back a long way, don't we, my brother? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and I, I, I see his I see his um, prep that he puts on um, the students. Yeah, for want of a better name. Um, so influential. When you reset what you're doing as a as a move, hearing that voice, yeah, like, is that is that the framework that you're working towards? When when is something more creative and you react to it in a f freestylistic, spontaneous way that actually the deck of cards refold and you're doing something else? For me, for me, it's is 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 the two extremes of either being comfortable enough to do whatever. Yeah. Or being so uncomfortable that I have no choice but to do something and I don't know what that thing's going to be. 
So it's... Physically uncomfortable or emotionally? Um, both, Whoa. I guess, because music can have an emotional reaction with you. So you're like, you might come out thinking like, yeah, I feel like this. And music changes. It's like, now I don't. Now I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm just going to go. Because mm. like, or even halfway through your, your rounds, if something changes and you might change for negative or positive. Yeah. But it is, I think those are the two states where I'm mostly in the whole freestyle things. Like I'm uncomfortable. Like say I've crashed, I've fallen. I'm not, I've not been in this position before, yeah. but I can't stop. Yeah. I'm in the middle of a battle. I've got yeah. to do something. It might come out good. It might come out whack, but that was, that's a freestyle moment right there. Or I'm feeling so good that I don't know what's going to happen, but I feel great. So whatever goes, goes. Two extremes, but you get the same sort of freestyle. Oh thing. man, now we're really getting into the rabbit hole of some shit right here. <laughs> okay, so you've, um, you must have a template that you work to. And what, do you ad lib with around the boundaries of that? Like, for instance, you could be doing a, 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 a routine that may be f from the outside looking like you know what you're doing, yeah. which is the idea, yeah. but you fall awkwardly or something like that. You know, the 10,000 hours suddenly kick in. Like, how often do you go outside of that, the, the, the um, routine parameters? Often. Really? Yeah, because like, like anything with a plan... Shit barely ever goes to plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So adaptability is the probably the highest thing that you need to work on. Um, like SWAT teams and and like SAS mm. have the same thing. Like they always have a plan, but their major key thing that they all have is adaptability. They need to be able to adapt one because they're doing extreme shit. Mm. So they have a plan for some extreme shit that's probably going to go wrong, and they're going to have to adapt for that extreme shit with and still get the same goal at the end. You know, so to us is the same. The DJ may mess up. Yeah. You know, you you're you know you wore the wrong shoes. This floor is different to what you're used to. You slip now. Oh, that routine isn't going to work on this floor because it's too it's not slidey enough. And all eventualities. All eventualities. You got you got you got to fix it up on the fly. You're blowing my mind today, mate. <laughs> can spin in the house. Right. Do you when you're in rehearsing or in practice training, do do you intentionally? Throw, I mean, yeah, quick, chuck a, chuck a, uh, <laughs> just uh, mess someone up. Yeah, yeah, Ch you know, chuck some Mr. Sheen on it, or maybe, maybe even some egg yolk or something. Let's see if they react to that. Do you know what I mean? Is there some tolerance threshold that you're trying to create with, with, you, with you, yourselves? Again, the shouting, the shouting thing. So, yeah. like, if you're training, because sometimes it's easy to fall into the pattern of like you've 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 missed the move, and it's part of your routine, and you just stop and start again. And someone, if someone's there, like, no, carry on. Finish the reps, finish the round, finish the set. Even if it's not how you expect it to, just get used to finishing your round. Even when you, even when you've messed up, you're creating that. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah, it's yeah, like, because yeah, yeah, yeah. you are gonna mess up sometimes. Yeah. And then how you train is how you how mm. you perform. Yeah, yeah. Like same so, with doing live music. It's the same. Shit. The same thing. So yo, just finish it. Yeah, you messed up. Cool. Finish it. Yeah. Because on stage, you're not gonna get to stop and start again. Yeah. And that might happen more than one occasion. It might within happen one more than yeah. In within that same yeah, round. Really, really. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's such a good... And when it comes to training, um, do you all have to be present? Is, is it a whole crew thing all the time? No. I mean, you've had a lot of crews, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I guess it all varies. depends on the personalities, right? I think... I think it depends a lot on, like, what... what you have to have a collective goal. Everyone has individual goals, but you all have to have a collective goal as well. Mm. And I think the, the, the stronger the connection on that collective goal is that kind of pulls you together a lot more often, mm -hmm. right? Because it's hard because, you know, you know, you've got people that have different, like Stephanie's a mum, you know, like I'm a dad. I'm not in dad mode mm. usually because my son's not here, but he's here for the last three weeks. So that changes how often I can train. I'm, we're training tonight, actually. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, um, Lightfoot's from Leeds, uh, Tom's from Manchester. They're both coming down tonight. But just because they they can and they're free and they're like, oh, are we doing a session? Cool. So if they're coming down from out of you town, make the we'll make, make we'll make the you know we're like they're coming from out of town. Let's try and all be there and then we'll have a, a crew session. So we try and have a crew session at least once a week. Um, well, so they come down at least, or, or you mean at the London the, other, the yeah. London heads will be will mostly be here once a week and it's usually Mondays, mm -hmm. and because we're usually travelling on weekends anyway. The lads from from uh, uh, Ireland, Leeds, and Manchester. If we've travelled together and they travel back to London, usually they'll just stay an extra an extra day, and we have a crew session the next day. How much fun must it be? You must have such. 
you know what I mean? This is a happy camper right here. I can't imagine <laughs> there being any worries about... Like, to, to have a crew like that, where the influence is coming from outside of London, outside the country, you know, UK representing, that is... Isn't yeah, that the, it's the best, right? Yeah. Travelling with your crew is the best. Like, it's, I travel a lot alone. A lot. Because of the whole judging. Mm. I'm judging mostly now. I don't yeah, really compete so much. Alone, yeah. So I'm always travelling alone. I'm never alone when I get there because there's always someone I know mm. and cool, whatever. But travelling with your crew is always different. There's always a, there's always a different story at the end of the, at the, end of the trip. Mm. You've said Bruce Lee. You've said SWAT teams. You've said some very triggering associative words that I think epitomise your attitude to to the art. Yeah. Don't you? Like, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. I'm like, I'm very much like a get it done yeah. sort of person. I'm yeah. a, I'd like to consider myself a doer. Does that include your lifestyle in, as a whole? Yeah. Really? I like getting stuff done. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, as in, uh, to, what, to a level of like, O O C D levels or from Can be, that's the barbering that's where the barbering comes in. It's the barber as well, by <laughs> yeah. the way. Do you know what I mean? Like the fade is a real fade. <laughs> Tapered yeah. to the tips. Yeah, that. <laughs> I it, it that that kind of fulfills my whole O C D thing. The whole like if you're having a shape up, like is it in line, like, you yeah. know, like everything being symmetrical and all, all that kind of satisfied my O C D thing. Really? But in terms of being a, a, a doer, I'm just like like, um, all right, I want to do this, cool. What's the first step to do that and just just start? And once you start, you just get the ball rolling. And I don't like being shit at what I do. So if I ever start something, I'm going to do it enough to be like, right, I've, I'm kind of doing this now. Now I can't be shit, so now I've got to do it more. Where's the urgency come from? It can't just be OCD. Where, where death. Is, death. <laughs> death. That's a real, that's a real, death. you know, that's, a, that's an anxiety puller right there. I used, to, I used to get panic attacks as a kid yeah. thinking about death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of the whole idea of like, what the hell is death? Like, what happens after death? Yeah. And then you can go into into whole spiritual chat after that if you mm. want. But it's like, really, it just came down to just not having control of what happens when after. you die, right? And coming close to or having event events where you may have felt like you were going to die at some point, make, just bring you closer to that, right? So that the only way to, to for me to overcome that was concentrating on what I do have control over, right? And I've only got control over what I do and how I react to things. But so I just do stuff people, There's now. not a lot of people that can have that, develop that mindset when their anxieties are through the roof. How well, did some, you... sometimes you get chucked in. Sometimes you ain't got a choice. Right. What, was your, what was your moment of... Mine was, was being in hospital. I was in hospital for a few months. Right. And I had a, had a mad like mix of tuberculosis and osteomyelitis, but we didn't know what it was at the oh time. My goodness, so I was in, in I was in a bed for three months, just losing weight, getting blood tests every day, injecting me with stuff, hoping for the best. They didn't know what it was for like three months. So I'm that like, is I'm, scary I'm, as fuck, isn't it? Yeah, I'm like, I'm dying. Yeah. I'm, I don't know what's killing me, but I'm dying. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they're ever gonna find what's wrong with me because I'm I was I lost like twenty kilos. I'm I was eighteen. I didn't have. I wasn't a big kid, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm barely, I'm not even big now. No, he's not. <laughs> so I was, I lost a lot of weight, um, done loads of reading, loads of reflecting, but, you know, it sounds nice, like, oh, you did all this stuff. Well, you don't really have a choice, you know, yeah. you're stuck in a bed, like, what else am I, am I going to yeah. do, you know? And that Forced. kind of propelled me into into being like, right, like, this could all be done, this could all finish, like, this could end tomorrow, and I've still not achieved the X, Y, Z, you know? Which is essentially what everyone who f thinks they're facing death goes through. It's this, you know, sense of the party continues, but I'm not in it. Yeah. Or I have all these opportunities. Have I fulfilled any of it? What could I be doing that I'm not doing? Yeah. I was mad. I was mad in hospital at myself when I was like, wow, I could have done so much more. Like I could have had this move and that move and that move by now if I wasn't just being a pussy and not doing this and like, oh, because it hurts or because I was scared. But I might die. Yeah. I could have, I haven't tried it and I might die from yeah. here, you know? Yeah. And I, I, I got really like, I was angry at myself for a while. I guess it's the stages of like accepting the, your, your, mm. your, your current state and, you know, going through denial and all, all these. I went through all of those while in that bed. So when I finally came out the other end, I'd already knew that like the minute I could walk properly again, I was in the gym. Yeah, yeah, and it was on. 
It was on. Big up Purvis as well, because, you know, he had to have a big hip operation to, uh, to get back on the floor, and he's fucking flying now, better than ever. And I know that was always a concern at the time for him. W would I ever be able to? Because, yeah. you know, the, the, the amazing, liberating feeling of him being in bed and saying, no, no, I'm not going to do this anymore. Mm. I'm going to fucking, what, I'm going to carp DM. I'm yes, gonna yeah, seize yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. That must be, you know, a, a, a sweet thing. Looking back at videos while I was in hospital, that was annoying. Really? When I was like looking at myself and I was looking at that, a few files that I had and I was like, this, I've done way more than this. Why is it not? So I recorded everything. Yeah, I took right. pictures of everything, everything, recorded everything. So I was like, I'm going to show my kid or my kid's kid someday that granddad used to do some cool shit. But even just for myself, when I can't do it no more, I was like, let me look back at when I used to fly and mm. spin around in my head and do all this. It's like, it's nice. I like it. But it wasn't there. When I was feeling like I might not be able to break anymore, when I went to do that, it wasn't there. Yeah, and it had a few videos. I was like, this is crazy. So it kind of, yeah, that kind mm. of flipped everything on its head. So it was that moment and having a kid. Those were the two moments when I was like, oh, it's go time. Okay, you have go time for a while and then things stabilize a little bit and it's like, boom, oh, it's go time again. So mm. I've, I've always had like little, little mm. moments of like push. I feel, I mean, you know, big respect to anybody that suffers from anxiety. It's not the easiest of um, uh, moments, shall I say, that people go through. Yeah. I, it's, it's, it's funny how internalised that becomes when really, and you've just coined it, essentially what, what people need to think is outwardly. And say, well, okay, that's an inevitability. Death is an inevitability. But, but what are you going to do to combat that? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fight, but what, what are you going to do before that? Because it's happening. Exactly. Yeah. What have you done? Yeah. You know? Breaking, but you know what? Battling is it's the same. Mm. Like that, I guess you're right in saying that these things kind of, you know, um, have my whole approach to to life, I yeah. guess, in general. And it, it really leaks into breaking because when, mm. I, when, I, when I train for battles, it's the same thing. I'm like, okay, what do I and don't I have control over? Right? I can't control the crowd. I have no control of what the floor is going to be. I have no control of what the DJ is going to play. I have no control of what the DJ, the the, um, the judges are going to choose. I have no control over what my opponent is going to do. Mm. I can influence it, mm. but I can't control it, yeah. right? So the one thing I need to make sure is that I don't run out of gas. I don't get tired. I don't flop this move because I've done it a thousand times. I don't have to think about these things that I have control over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can deal with the things that I don't have control over. Real talk, yeah. Right? So once I, if I'm, if I'm there and I've done everything I can do to be in control of all the stuff I have, the theory? I don't have to think about them. That's it. They're out. I only have to think about you, the music, and I can ignore the crowd. The judges are no afterwards. The floor is whatever it is. Mm. You have to adapt on the, on the fly anyway. Mm. But now it's less things to think about. Am I going to hit it? I don't have to think about that. Or am I tired? I don't have to think about that. Mm. I've done my running. I've done my thingy. I've done, you know, like that's background noise. Now mm. I'm just, now it's just here. And that way it allows me to be present, you know? Yo, that's... Co and that's a reflection on life itself. It's like, con concentrate on the things you can control. Yeah. Because the ones you can't, you, you, you know what I mean? That, that, those things you want to worry about, that they, they probably won't even come to surface anyway. Yeah. Just concentrate on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when something when something does jump out and it... Well, now it's this. Yeah. But it's now, mm. not... In the future, you're not thinking, oh, what if that happens? Well, it, if it does, it does, and if it, and when it does, cool. Now I deal with it because yeah. it's in the now. I'm in, I'm present, so I'm only dealing with what's now. Yeah. If I'm not present, then I'm worrying about what's going to happen, and now it's ruined my present. Yeah. Because I'm thinking, oh, but what if this happens? And then and then you do crash that move from thinking about <laughs> if we're going to crash it. <laughs> Two, you told me. Do you, know? <laughs> do you know what I mean? So. Oh man, what a brilliant conversation! So you know, without uh, overstepping the anxiety mark, what is the future for you, brother? What are we what are we thinking? What's 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 the plans? The future. Um, I'd like to get back into battling a bit more. Nice. Uh, not not on the solo front mm -hmm. because that's a different beast. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very much like active with my crew. I want to be present for my crew. Mm. Um, I, I think like I'm not old enough as well to to sit back and no. and not do stuff no you know i still want not. i still want to be part of the the, the conversation uh, and the and the, the, the tapestry yeah and the and part of you know part of that journey with my crew because i know you know they're a lot younger and they're, they're doing things that i've done a fair bit mm. yeah, <laughs> a yeah. of, a way ago but yeah, you know a thing or two about a thing or two don't yeah you? <laughs> yeah so and you know it's nice to be there and be able to to to, to help them through it mm. and be part of it 
for as long as I can. And then I want to continue doing the, the the judging stuff that I've been doing. Killing it, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. And the, and teaching. Mm. I do like teaching. I like coaching. Um, oh, what's the name of the, your um, uh, Instagram for that? You've got an Instagram for that, right? No, that's AJ. AJ, AJ okay. has... Um, AJ47, he has loads of tutorials on YouTube. There you go. His YouTube, he's got loads of tutorials on YouTube. He's got some on Instagram. If you can't find them on YouTube, you can find them through his Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and he also does classes. Nice. Actually, so um, if any of you have kids that want to start breaking after 2024, they mm. will be. Like, that is definitely Yeah, it doesn't stop after the summer of 2024, yeah. you know, like there's lots more things going on in the world. Yeah, if, if anything, it just starts. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. The earth isn't flat. You don't fall off at the end. <laughs> you keep on going. It's an, it's an ever-growing concept. Brother, thank you so much. Thank you <laughs> for having pleasure. me, What a pleasure. Spinning house. Yeah, we'll kill a killer podcasting it again. Do, 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 doing it again. We're out like it was out of fashion. Thank you so much for joining us, sharing us, caring. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. You stay lucky, people. Peace. Peace. <laughs> That was cold. Wicked, man. I think I enjoyed that.